work on this, you're always an engine near. Okay, so I'm back for another one. Um, as you, some of you may know anyway, uh, I decided to throw my hat in the ring and try an LS swap on that uh, 63 C10 short box step side thing I got. Um, I got rid of the 400 uh, and the TH350 and I want to put an LS in there whether it be a 4.8, 5.3, 6.0, I don't know. Um, I know nothing about them. I've not only have I never done the swap, I've never even owned a vehicle with an LS motor in it before. I couldn't even tell you where the dipstick is. But I want to do it, so we're going to give it a go. Um, I'm currently on my way to check out one of the local auto recyclers, auto wreckers, whatever you want to call them. Um, this one's actually pretty close to my house. They are a place that I use quite frequently for parts. I've never purchased a motor from there before. So I'm not too familiar with the process, but we're gonna go check it out. Um, they do have a lot of vehicles with LS motors in them. We'll go take a look and uh, do a quick little walk through and see if we can find something that suits our needs and uh, grab our tools and go ahead and yank it out. I'd like to find a 5.3 or a 6 liter. I'd like to find a 4L60 or a 4L80. We'll see what happens here. Um, hang tight, we're almost there, okay? Where are we? 76th Avenue and 17th Street. So we're kind of moving towards, I guess, 75th Avenue. So you can see there, they got that, that cool billboard up there. Interesting story there. They had a, like a flagship 68 GMC on there for quite a while. Um, I actually sold them that truck. So this is... Is it here? Where are we here? Look at the size of this place, eh? Some cool cars out here, right in the parking lot. Look at that thing there. Hmm. So these ones are builders, so you can't really pull the motors out of them. Same as these guys. They got a few. They're pretty good for building. That's the funniest looking Ranger I've ever seen. Let's see a little uh, S10 or an S15 over here. You know, I can't uh, I can't pass these by without taking a look, see if they got the five-speed two-wheel drive in there because nope so many guys want those to stick in there you know really i was going to say 60 to 66 trucks but you can stick it in anything really <laughs> you can take it back a lot further than that if you want i know guys who put them in like their 48 chevy uh, bolts right in just got to change out the input shaft and you can use your stock uh, clutch or you can leave the input shaft and change out the clutch assembly choice is yours and then we're getting into forks so we'll get out of here didn't do us any good we're not ford guys Another good one, if you don't know, see, this is a safari van. You can actually take that base and use that to give yourself power, power, 
power seats on any bucket. The more you know. So these are the bases, these safari van bases. Um, they're pretty much a flat base on the bottom. A lot of guys put them in the uh, 67 to 72 trucks. Or you can also put in the 60 to 66. I put a set in that panel truck of mine if you want to see how they fit. Um, but I was real happy with them. I took some seats out of a van, put them on here. gives you all your adjustment back and forth. The base itself gives you your sliders. So it doesn't matter what seat you put on there. The more you know. And that, uh, yeah, that's Safari van. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. Let's keep going here. Got a few in this little guy. Pretty complete yet, too. That's a shame. So somebody cut this open to get at that emblem. really too bad I'm gonna console in here kind of shape that guy in bad somebody's gonna want that I'll put this back with it dash is lifted a little bit in the front Hmm, not bad. I used to know a guy who had a, uh, well, he had 75, 76, 77. He had all those. He liked the style with the big bumper. Uh, that was his jam. I don't know whatever happened to him. I think I know a guy who fixes these things up too. Not bad, not bad. Some usable parts. Anyway. Getting a little sidetracked here. My apologies. Another one. Oh, somebody using the Porta John. Look at this. Somebody hacked off the front of these fenders. That's a that's a salvageable fender in my opinion. It's not too bad of a dash actually. Radio holes are still good in the bottom. We had a little bit of lifting here, but if you know, you know, you can fix that. What are these, like 56 Pontiac or something? Jeez, am I ever getting sidetracked? Sorry, guys. 57 Pontiac, sorry. Okay, so they, what they do here is they put all their trucks together. So, so we got a navigator over here. I'm not too sure what the new ones are, though. I should have really asked at the front desk because they have what they call a fresh set and that would really stop a guy from having to do what I'm doing right now just roaming around looking it's 5.7 Yeah, there we got something. Hmm. This is four wheel drive. Is that a 5.3, 4.8? I don't know.
so we're in here I settled on this guy um, it's a 5.3 it's a uh, it's very complete um, see the exhaust is cut down below the headers headers it's got headers that's pretty cool um, it's also got a cold air intake here we'll be taking that as well um, so yeah I'm waiting on CJ he should be here soon I think in the meantime I will get started I think I'll go through some of the stuff I brought along after I think what I'll like I I brought everything including the kitchen sink but what I'll do is I'll just mark down what I actually used and yeah I brought a moving blanket because I'm old and fat and I'm really not interested in uh, laying in the dirt for any longer than I have to but I do have to so um, I'm gonna get started on this and hopefully CJ joins me shortly hang tight okay so I'm underneath the car now or the truck I guess and this is what we got um, I use these little lights from Amazon there little magnets uh, they're pretty good lost quite a while and magnetic so they're nice they're nice for the parts yard you know what I mean I don't have a link but if you look at it you can probably figure out how to find it anyway I'm just trying to figure out where to get started on this um, like I said, I've never done anything LS before. And I'm thinking where I want to start is by disconnecting the engine from the transmission. I'm kind of lucky in the fact that the exhaust is already cut. That's pretty awesome. Um, but now i got to figure out how to get at these torque converter bolts so it's not really set up like a you know a th350 or 400 see there's a plate here but i think i have to remove the starter to get access yeah i think the starter is going to have to come out so that i can get access to the torque converter bolts normally you have a an inspection plate down here but we got an oil pan so that's not going to work out um cj is on the way he's not here yet though uh, so we'll see what we can do until he gets here i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pull that starter yeah i'll pull that starter out and then uh we yank this plate off i think i think we gotta I think that bolt, that bolt, and maybe that bolt will give us access. I'm not too sure. Um, but what I do know is there's two bolts up there for the starter, and that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to yank those off, yank these off, and then we'll see where we end up. I'll bring you back for that. Okay, so let's take a look at where we're at. Um, so up top here, we're just pulling hoses, uh, shroud, the cold air intake, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, over here, we're starting to, to pull off the, the wiring harness, just getting into that. Um, so down below, I got, here, I'll take you down there and show you. So, I got this guy, I got those two up there, I don't know if you can see those, I got those two off, I got that one off, I got the torque converter bolts out, so to get those torque converter bolts, what I ended up doing was pulling the starter, and then rotating the engine, and there was three bolts in there. Maybe I'll show you what those bolts look like. In my case, so I seen online somebody was saying uh, 
fucking Allen key or something like that. Oh yeah, look at that. It does have an Allen key center. But this is a 15 mil. And I was able just to pop those all off. Came off pretty good. You see there is some Loctite or something in there though. So there's three of those guys. And then to keep things simple, I just put my starter back in. Um, there's these guys on the, the, the side. Four of those. Uh-oh. Let me see three. Maybe I gotta go back under. And then these two are the ones that go from the transmission into the bottom of the oil pan. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Uh, trying to decide the best course of action for up here. So I do have three more bolts up top. There'll be one, two, three. Across the back there. It'll be time consuming to remove this intake, but it might be the best thing to do. Um, I'm just trying to figure that out now. I've never done one of these before, but we're doing it today. Um, same as this wiring harness. You know, at first glance, my gut tells me to take this harness off from here, throw it on the engine, remove the engine this way. But CJ was thinking it might be best to remove the harness and pull it this way. Right, Siege? Uh, so anyway, that's the debate we're having right now. How to take because it. if we take this intake off, those three bolts get real easy to get at. Yes. So, anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, we'll be back. What'd they say about the... So, we're making some progress here. Um, we decided to go with CJ's idea and start taking a bunch of this, this harness off the intake manifold. And I think it's going to work out. Um, I got the intake manifold unbolted. So basically you're just gonna kinda go through and start disconnecting everything. Um, when it comes to these guys, these guys were the only real challenge. Um, I found you. So this goes inside here, you pull that up, give that a clip there, and that pulls out. That's right on the injector itself. Um, you know, if you've done this kind of stuff before, it might be a bit of a no-brainer, but if you haven't like me, and CJ, right Sage? What's that? Have you done this before? Good Lord, no. No. So, might be a good little helpful tip for you. Now, as far as taking the intake manifold out, you might be thinking that seems like an awful lot of work. And you're right, it is. Well, it is and it isn't. Um, so, as far as I'm concerned, we got to take this harness out anyway. Whether we replace it with a harness or strip this harness, I think it should come out regardless. So we're not really wasting any time on that. As far as the intake manifold physically coming off, it's just a bunch of eight mil bolts. You can see them there. You can get the, you can get the, uh, the ratchet down there easy enough. It's super easy to get at. Um, I think there's eight of them or 10 of them. It's pretty simple. It's actually disconnected now. I got some lines I got to disconnect, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, once this intake manifold comes off, I can get at those three bolts at the top of the top of the engine transmission. Once those guys are off, I should be able to pop this guy out. You know, once I get those motor mounts off, which don't really look all that simple to get at, but we haven't really looked at it yet. We'll see. Maybe it won't be so bad. Um, at any rate, we're getting there. We're going to stop for lunch here pretty quick. Because, uh, you know, CJ works for food. Yeah. So we're going to stop for lunch pretty quick because CJ works for food. Yes. We'll look at what we got here. So it looks like five per side. And these are eight mil, five sixteenths. Same as this side. This is my fuel line. I ended up cutting it. I'll probably just plumb something in there. I don't know what that is. Is that a fuel return line? I'll have to do some digging. Gonna have to learn. Same as this guy here. This comes off of my, these are called steam ports. Steam port. Anyway, 
CJ's back. How'd you make out? I found some napkins for you. Some napkins. Some napkins. Okay, so why do he need napkins? Let's take a look. So we got that intake manifold out so that we can access those bolts at the back. You see it's pretty tight back there. Um, we got a couple more sensors to take off and then there's, can you see that ground there? Let's see here. Right back there, it's a ground wire coming off of the harness. So we'll take that off, we'll take that plug off. We got that sensor, it looks like it's, I don't know if there's a plug on there or not. We'll have to see. And then uh, figure out what's going on with this. Is that fuel line? I don't know. At any rate, these are cathedral ports, CJ was explaining. Yeah. What does it mean? It means they're shaped like cathedral windows. That's what does that mean other mechanically? I have no freaking clue. Okay. I don't so, remember. So that's what the port is called. We don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. We're just, we're not LS guys. We're, we're learning. We're trying, right? We're very, I'm told I'm very trying. Okay. Um... <laughs> So I think we'll pop those off. We'll pop off those three bolts. Then we'll go have some lunch. Then when we come back, it'll be motor mounts. Power steering. And power steering. So power steering is just gonna be unbolt this pressure line. Then I'm not too sure where that low pressure line goes because we got a cooler here. So I'm sure it's gonna come off the back and run to the cooler. So I'm hoping I can take it off somewhere in here, cut it. I'm gonna stick it on to the end of the high pressure line so it doesn't make a big mess in the back of my truck. Anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, hang tight, we'll get you caught up. So I pulled the wiring out of here. Anything leading up to the cab, I just, I just cut free, unbolted, disconnected, what have you. This here I believe is like headlight stuff. Uh, Maybe somebody who knows will see this and laugh at me, I don't know, but that's what I did. That's where we're at. Everything else is free here. I think I think I still have a ground wire hooked up over here. I gotta disconnect. CJ's in the back there working on that last bolt that actually hooks to that uh, dipstick tube. So we had three on the top. Um, I got the center one, he got this one, now he's working on that one. Um, and yeah. You found some small toy bar when you got a chance, that'd be awesome. Demanding. Hold on a sec here. Yeah. Oh. Here you go, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Let's see. Worked pretty good. Okay, so yeah, so we're awful close. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm not too sure where you're supposed to hoist these things out from. I think I'm gonna take some ratchet straps after I disconnect the headers or the motor mounts. I think I'm just gonna go right off those headers. Hope they're strong enough. Hope they're not rotted out. If they are, I guess I'll find out real quick. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Or that's what we're going to do. I think we're going to do that. Are you with me on that, Siege? Sure, whatever. Hey. Whatever you say. Hey, whatever I say. I like the sounds of that. Anyway, uh, we got everything out. You see this is filthy. That mounted right here, just so you know. We got her out of there now. Um, it's, looks like a real mess. Just purchasing a standalone harness is looking pretty good right now. And it's quite likely what's going to happen. Because this is, uh, I don't know. What do you think, Sage? Well, Just buying a standalone harness. <laughs> it's looking really good about now. Yeah. And we're going to go 50-50 on it, so he doesn't mind. All right, Sage.
Was that? Yeah. See, he loves it. Loves that idea. Okay, so that's gonna do this for now. He's gonna get that one bolt, and then I gotta take him out for lunch. What do you want to eat? Donair. Donair. Looks like he's going for donairs. All right, we'll be uh, we'll be back soon. Okay, so we got these motor mounts, one, two, three bolts. Both sides are the same like that. And then we're just lifting her straight up. CJ has been uh, tried and, and found and nuts. Uh, Jeff, Jeff is here, my buddy Jeff, you all know Jeff. He is now going to be the cameraman. We'll pop this guy out of here. Sure. Making out. Keep these out of the way, keep going. Right. Gotta come forward, but we're jammed here and we're jammed against here. But we're not. Oh, let's not see what totally happens. Did we lose a strap? Bust the no, strap. We just broke loose a bit. Oh, we broke the strap. Three everywhere. Uh, hold on. What are you trying to cut there? Oh, those two nails. Hold on. Is that not the snare? Good. Good chop right here. What else is there to know? We're motoring. Not even the crickets are going anymore. <laughs> you just tested the strength of everything you forgot to unhook. Which was a and few things. Um, did anybody remember that power steering hose? This one here. You said you were gonna remember it. I think it's a D cord. I think I'll uh, pop off this clamp here instead. 
instead of Jeff's idea. Ah, ah, ah! There we go. Now it won't steer you wrong. You're talking again. I know. I like it. Okay. Well, almost at the end of your chain. What you got there is a chain reaction. I think we're going to clear. It's a very uplifting experience. These two posts are where the module goes um, for the drive-by wire. So if you have drive-by wire, it's those two posts there. This, all this wiring here, we didn't need. This all just kind of feeds back into the vehicle. Let's see, what else can I show you? This was a strange one. So there's, um, there's a bolt goes through here, 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 not here, here and here. Strange, eh? I don't know why there's no bolt through there. And then on the bottom, those two that actually go into your oil pump or oil pan. So something to think about there. Another thing is these are the motor mounts. So I was able with a long extension to get these out, all three of them, even that one. It looks, it looks like it's almost impossible with that master cylinder there, but it, it was very possible. Keep in mind that these guys are Loctited in and they'll fight you every step of the way, but They do come out. That's not a big deal um, This is Cooler for the uh, power steering. I don't think I really need it So I'm not gonna bother with it You might want to I don't think I'm gonna put that in my 63 though, so I didn't bother. Looks like it'd be easy enough to adapt. You know, it's just a little cooler with a line running from, from the pump to it and then back to the steering box. Yeah, that's about it. Um, so yeah, you got those bolts. You got these bolts. That's the, that's the majority of it, really. These six and those, what, two, four, Five, six, seven, eight. And then you got all sorts of wiring and stuff to unplug and cut. And... But that's the bulk of the work. You got fan shroud and hood and so on and so forth.